Hey there creepy peeps and welcome back to another new movie review. Today we are talking about The Devil's Doorway. Really quick though, before I get into anything else, I want to say thank you to my creepy patron peeps for your support of my channel. Thank you so, so much. If you want to find out the perks to being a creepy patron peep, you can follow that link in the description. Y'all know how it is in every single video. Just a warning, I'm about to butcher the names of like all of the people involved <laughs> when I read the summary. Directed by Ashlyn, Aislinn, whichever one, Clark, and starring Oh gosh, uh, Lalore <laughs> Roddy, Syrian Flynn, and Helena Barreen. The Devil's Doorway takes place in 1960 when two priests, Father Thomas and Father John, are sent by the Vatican to investigate a potentially miraculous event in an Irish home for women. Their investigation leads them to a young girl who appears to be possessed. I don't find any like super fun facts uh, on this movie, so I'll just do a shameless plug. Past Friday, myself and Emma from Spooky Astronauts did our fourth episode of Does This Offend You? And it's actually related to The Devil's Doorway a little bit. Not that we talked about it, but the topic was religion and we had at least one kind of like exorcism movie, which is what we got going on here today. So if you want to hear our thoughts on religion and horror and you know, all that fun stuff. Um, I will link the video somewhere around my head and probably in the description as well. It was over on Emma's channel, so be sure to check it out if you haven't watched it yet because it was an awesome episode. Anyways, so let's get into what I liked about The Devil's Doorway. I liked about it really quick. I thought uh, the two actors that played uh, Father Thomas and Father John did a really good job. Um, I thought there was something like really genuine about them, especially Father Thomas, who was played by Lalorati. Really hope I said that name right, I have no idea. They were genuine enough for me to want to follow through the movie. I also really liked the look of the film, um, I should have said, which I don't, <laughs> I didn't at all. Um, this is a found footage horror movie and it's set in 1960, um, which I mean, we'll get into in the next section. I, I gotta say I did like the look of the film, obviously because this is found footage and set in 1960, the, you know, the camera that they're supposed to be using in the movie is not obviously nothing like what we have today. So it's grainy and distorted at times. And I really liked that look. I mean, obviously like, cause I've kind of taken on the grainy, distorted, you know, glitchy sort of aesthetic here. I thought I made like the scary scenes, you know, like right before your typical jump scare, even scarier because the footage looked more real. I think there's something to be said about like found footage that set <laughs> this far back in time because like just seeing like grainy, even if it's just like, you know, even if it was filmed with a normal camera of today and then just made to look that way, it still looks more tangible because it wasn't digital back then. So you know that you know, they were filming <laughs> on actual film. Like if this were actually taking place in 1960, they would have filmed on film that you can touch. Um, so it felt more, that's what I'm getting at <laughs> in a not very good way. It felt more real because of the time period this was supposed to be set in. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Let's get into what I didn't like about the Devil's Doorway. I didn't like. Okay. So as I was talking about your typical jump scares, um, the film definitely played in to some very tired and overused, at least to me, found footage cliches that so many other movies before it has done. It was full of jump scare after typical jump scare and it got old very quickly for me, which is not difficult to do though, because y'all know me, I'm not a found footage fan. While I loved the look of the footage that, you know, like the old 1960s footage I was looking at or that style, um, I found myself questioning why they were filming <laughs> a lot. I completely understand the whole 
part of the plot where they were directed to film everything and that's why they were it was just kind of like being dutiful and filming everything they could but i feel like as far back in the future as it was set i feel like it was hard to believe that father john was so glued to the camera i don't know maybe it's just because i'm a millennial and it just feels like a millennial thing to be glued to your <laughs> camera like i feel like that's one thing found footage kind of does well at least like when it's set in present day because you know nowadays we all want to film everything and have like the best shots and we know that something scary or crazy happening will get lots of views on youtube or whatever so i can much more believe somebody <laughs> of like a millennial age filming everything even when they probably should just drop the camera and run that kind of leads into the end of the movie which i'm sorry i am gonna spoil a little bit um i won't give you details but it's just one <laughs> One thing that's definitely a spoiler, so you know, cover your ears for a second or something. Definitely like an age difference between Father Thomas and Father John. Father Thomas is the older priest and he's been doing this a lot. Um, I found it kind of related to Stigmata, which is one of the movies we talked about in our Does This Offend You episode. They don't outright say it, but it feel like his job is to investigate miracles, just like Father Kiernan in Stigmata. You can tell he's been jaded by this because he <laughs> has debunked so many potential like miracles like he doesn't believe in a lot anymore so he's kind of like the older kind of grumpier <laughs> priest and then we have father john who is much younger and constantly questioning <laughs> poor father john is like don't you believe in anything and constantly filming as well and he's the one who knows how to work the camera and there's a couple of times where father thomas you know actually kind of says almost in so many words that you know like they make it clear that he doesn't know how to work the camera really doesn't have any desire <laughs> to want to work the camera um he's just content to let father john do it and then we get to the very end of the movie and the spoiler that father john dies um so we've lost our cameraman because father thomas has not filmed a single thing in the rest of the movie it's all been father john filming he dies and i'm like okay interesting all right let's see where it goes and then father thomas films like his last confession or whatever you know like should anyone find this blah 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 blah. that part makes that part made sense um and then he picks up the camera <laughs> to finish out the movie which to me didn't make any sense um yeah, I'm like, I just feel like he wouldn't have. He just filmed his final confession. That's kind of like his last words. And just what they set up with his character, I feel like he would have just stood up and finished out the movie without us filming it. I don't know. Because at that point, the light that they were using on the camera for their illumination had gone out and obviously as this was set in 1960 there's no night vision on that camera so i don't understand why he was continuing to hold the camera for the rest of the movie i'm probably being nitpicky because it's like in the grand scheme of things it's like the last two minutes of the movie that he's operating the camera <laughs> so it's not that bad but you know whatever i don't like found footage so didn't like it so was the devil's doorway worth it worth it say no 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 it wasn't for me um i'm gonna give it a one out of five on imdb it has a 6.4 out of 10 on rotten tomatoes it has a 67 percent critic score but a 19 percent audience score and then on letterboxd it has a 3.1 out of 5. it was able to check out the devil store away via amazon so i will leave a link now to my blog because if you follow me on twitter instagram whatever um, i gave my blog a facelift and now i have a page on my blog just completely full of uh, <laughs> amazon affiliate links um, right now they are just for the movies that i have reviewed this month um and i'll see if you know maybe i'll add in products and stuff that i talk about in my favorites or something but i'm thinking i'm gonna switch it out every month i'll update it for the movies that i'm watching that month so now all i have to do is just direct you to that link to my blog which is always in the description so definitely check it out 
go to my blog and tell her she's pretty. Um, <laughs> she just got a makeover. So that'll be there forever and always. You can go there and find Amazon affiliate links for everything that I watch for the most part. Um, right, anyways. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here and become a creepy peep today and ring that notification bell every time you want to be notified that I post a video, which is Monday through Friday. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and until next time, stay strange. Bye.